From the North Slope at Prudhoe Bay in Arctic, Alaska, they roll. Across the frozen tundra, over snow-covered mountains and icy rivers, 800 miles south to Valdez, the big trucks returning for supplies for the great Trans-Alaska Pipeline, which will bring vitally needed oil to energy-hungry America. Man, am I looking forward to a nice hot bath and a big, juicy steak. You can say that again, K-4. Hey, you gonna see you down at Joe's place, huh? Oh, there's a chicken. I'm taking a rain check on that. Gotta get up early for tomorrow's run. Okay, catch you on the flip-flop. That K-4 sure is one hot shot. <laughs> yeah, but he's okay. Bad curb down the hill a ways. Better cool it, Mike. Right, hey, what the... What's the matter? The brakes, they're not working. Let's try the emergency. It's no use, it's gone. We'll never make it. Oh, God! Back in Washington, a worried Oscar Goldman listens to Air Force General Maxwell Bond. Listen, Goldman, the new early warning system we're testing at Prudhoe keeps breaking down. I don't understand it. Our best scientists worked on that for over a year. Well, something's wrong, and I want to know what. So far, nobody's coming up with answers. I can assure you, General, that my man in the area... What? How did it happen? Oh, that was Alaska. My undercover man, Mike Colton, was killed in a truck accident... That makes the third man I've lost, and it's beginning to look like these aren't just accidents. Excuse me a minute, General. Ms. Wilson, get Steve Austin over here fast. Yes, Mr. Goldman. I gotta leave. Keep me posted, Goldman. One hour later. And that's the story, Steve. Looks to me like it might be sabotage. I want you to get up there to Valdez and sign on as a truck driver. But you know how extreme cold affects me, Oscar. No problem. Rudy worked up a little gadget he can attach to your bionics in 30 minutes that'll keep you functioning in the coldest weather. Anyway, it'll still be summer up there for a little while. It is one week later, on the waterfront at Valdez. Hey, you know that new guy that signed on a few days ago? Sanders? Yeah. He was asking a lot of questions about Pruto. Seemed pretty anxious to make the whole 800-mile run up there. Got a feeling he may be one of those... Yeah, me too. And I ain't taking any chances. We're too close to the payoff. I've arranged another little accident. Oh, fix the brakes? Nah, but when Sanders gets up about 100 miles from Prudhoe, he's going to make like a Boy Scout helping a little old lady cross the street. You handle this rig better than anyone I know, Sanders, and I know them all. It's nothing. Got a little practice in the service. Another few hours and we'll be at the Prudhoe base, and that's what I call... This is KY-17, KY-17, calling anyone. Come in, anyone. Let me take that. This is TR-7. What's the problem? Man, am I glad to hear you, TR-7. Rig slipped off the road. Driver injured. Where are you? About 100 miles south of Prudhoe, moving north. You're right on. Keep coming a couple of more miles and look for us on the right. Over and out. In the summer, this is a pretty bad country to get stuck in. Yeah, I knew a guy that froze to death out here in an hour. Hey, I think I see something. Hey, that's it. About a quarter of a mile up. But as Steve pulls over toward the disabled truck, his keen eye catches sight of someone holding a gun on the other side of an apparently unconscious driver slumped over the wheel. Listen, Bill, don't get out. But, but what? Somebody with a gun. It's a trap. Hijacking? Out here? Just do what I say and stay down. Keep the motor running. Steve gets out on the driver's side. But instead of walking out toward the disabled truck, pushes his hat out on the end of a stick. Instantly, the gunman fires. Got him. Sign her up. Let's get out of here. Sanders, you okay? Yeah, but I'd like to catch those guys. Let's go. We ain't never gonna catch them. That's one of those souped-up jobs. I guess you're right. I don't get it. What were they after? Why us? It beats me. Maybe we'll get a line on them at Prudhoe. That's exactly what I wanted to do all along. They may lead me to where the action really is. It is later that night in the plush offices of F. Arnold Chalmers, president of Teletronics Incorporated, a giant electronics manufacturing complex in a secluded area north of Seattle. What's the word from our man in Valdez? Uh, he's all set, uh, just waiting for word from you. Yeah, then it's time to move. I got a $15 million investment to protect, and I'm not going to let that Computronics outfit get the final contract. Uh, the word is that General Bond is getting pretty fed up with them. Well, this time we're going to make it look like their system is so dangerous he'll cancel them and sign up with us. Wouldn't Computronics be surprised to know that Ramsey, the man in charge of their whole operation, is really working for us? Call Valdez and tell our operative to give the okay for the final move at Prudhoe. What exactly are you planning? The only thing left, the final convincer. 
There's going to be another accident, only this time the whole early warning system is going to blow up. Meanwhile, Steve had arrived at the Pruto base, found the truck used in the assassination attempt, and got a lead on the would-be killers. It is the next morning, and he is reporting to Oscar. And I think I'm onto something, Oscar. The guys who tried to gun me down on the road just finished meeting with the guy they called Ramsey. During the conversation, Wallen made a phone call, came back and said something to Ramsey, and then he took off. Who's Ramsey? I don't know, but he headed for the test installation. I'm going to follow him as soon as I hang up. I'll run a computer check on him in the meantime. Good luck. Borrowing a jeep, Steve takes the road to the test base, located a few miles out. But just as he leaves... Blakey, did you see that guy in the jeep? It's Sanders. Then we didn't get him. No, and now I'm sure he's a fed, and he's on to us. We gotta stop him before he's on to Ramsey and blows the whole thing. We'll take the other jeep. Meanwhile, Ramsey reaches the base, enters the small building housing the complex electronic and laser components which constitute the heart of the new early warning system. While his two assistants are busy monitoring incoming data, he moves quickly to the master control console and starts changing the dial settings. Hey, Ramsey, what are you doing? Look at the readings. You'll blow the place up. Hey, what's with the gun? I hate to do this, but I have no choice. I've got to blow this place up, and you two will have to go with it. I don't understand. At least you might tell us why. It's a long story, but it means one million dollars to me. And... As Steve bursts in, Ramsey whirls and fires. But his aim is erratic, and the shot goes wild. He... Just in time. Who are you, mister? Never mind. Just get those dials. Don't touch those dials. Suddenly, the two gunmen appear at the door. Uh, don't move, Sanders, or whatever your name is. Now, up against the wall. All of you. Blinky, help Ramsey up. Oh, my head. What hit me? Never mind. Did you fix it so the place blows? Yeah, it'll go any minute now. Let's get out of here. Okay. Ta-ta, Mr. Government Man. The gunman glances toward the door. But in the fraction of a second he takes his eye off Steve, the bionic man explodes into action. The gunmen, both tough street fighters, fight back ferociously. But the super speed and the super strength of bionic power are too much for them, and it's over. Quick, the dials. One of the technicians races to the control panel and turns the dials just in time to prevent a disastrous explosion. Phew, one more second and we'd have been goners. Well, with Ramsey out of the picture, there shouldn't be any more of those accidents on this project. Say, can I reach Washington on that phone? Sure, special hookup. And that wraps it up, Oscar. Good work, Steve. Uh, Steve? Yeah? I hope you won't mind, pal, but I've got another assignment for you. Oh, but Oscar, I... I want you to go down to Hawaii. Hawaii? And keep Jamie Summers company for a week. She's on vacation and she's bored. What do you say, pal? You know I never turned down an assignment, no matter how tough, pal. Mm -hmm.